What's packing everybody? It's your boy Guy Chow. First up his name. Welcome back to the show. We're talking week 11. Green Bay loses 34-31 to the Colts in overtime. We're going to break down the five W's. Who, what, when, where, why. And we're also going to play the blame game. And then we're going to wrap up the show with some good news about the Hall of Fame. Announcing 25 finalists. Two of those finalists happen to be former Packers. Hmm. Almost sneeze right there. Let's jump right into the week 11 loss, man. It was a heartbreaker. It was uh, one of those games that had you on the edge of your seat, almost gave you a heart attack, and was an absolute roller coaster ride. Who stood out in the game? To me, uh, the standout for this team so far, uh, for this game anyways, was Elton Jenkins. This kid is now in his second year. He's been starting since a rookie, and he's only given up one sack in his entire career. He's literally played every single position on the offensive line, and I think it's safe to ask the question, is he the best offensive lineman on this team? Even though we just played David, paid David Bakhtiari a bunch of money, and I think David is, you know, Maybe the best, probably the best left tackle in football. He just got paid like it. I mean, I don't know why no one's talking about Elton Jenkins as an all pro and why nobody's talking about him in the media, but this kid is fucking insane. What happened in a nutshell? Well, in a nutshell, Green Bay came out hot. They didn't look super dominating. They didn't, they, even though they scored four touchdowns in the first half, they weren't like. They weren't just like having their way with the Colts. Um, but, you know, they looked about as good as you can expect a team to look against the number one scoring defense and number one passing defense in the league. And, um, you know, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and then basically, second half happens. They come out flat. The defense allows 17 points. And um, they lost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When was the turning point? I will say the turning point was the second half, you know, because before then Packers were kind of in control and they were up by 14. And then after that, they allowed 17 straight points and they lose by three in overtime. But as a little caveat to that turning point, I would say in the third quarter when 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 uh, when Shepard fumbles that ball, it was 28-28. He he uh, he fumbles he fumbles the ball. And then, you know, it's thirty it's thirty one twenty eight and it's like, okay. That, that's that swung the momentum, gave them the lead, the first lead of the game. So, you know, uh, fumble turnovers are always a momentum swingers. Uh where would I like to see this team improve on offense and defense? Uh where do they need to improve? Um I, I would say offensively they need to get back to running the ball. Aaron Jones only had 10 carries, and he had four receptions, so that's 14 touches on the day. That's not enough. He needs 20 carries at least. I would say 22 to 25, you know, total touches. So, you know, sprinkling, you know, a handful of receptions in there or targets at least every game for this team to really be at their offensive peak. But given LaFleur's history, I think he's a run-the-ball kind of guy. And so I don't know why the fuck they're passing so much. Um, and then uh, defensively, you know, obviously Pettin should be fired, but I don't think that's going to happen because they should have fired him last year after the NFC Championship game. But I would just like to see them not play so soft on third and short. And, of course, every game I like to see them try to tackle better. Why they ultimately lost this game? Turnovers. You can't commit four turnovers. Even though they got two of their own, they committed four and, you know, allowed the Colts to basically stay in the game. Time to play the blame game where basically I just place blame where it belongs. Short and simple. 50% is going to Aaron Charles freaking Rodgers. Well, first of all, he had two turnovers. So, two turnovers, that's 50% of the turnovers right there. <laughs> they had four turnovers on the day. He had two of them. So, there you go. That's 50% of the turnover. That's enough to me already for, uh, you know, Hall of Fame quarterback and, you know, some guy who's supposed to be in the MVP race and the front runner or whatever. I guess we we'll say it's Mahomes now. Um, and, uh, you know, a guy who people just say is just so amazing. Like, just everything. Aaron Rodgers, I mean, God, he's just so amazing. He's just a walking Hall of Famer, right? Well, he didn't. He hasn't played like it to me, you know, in, in, in since like 2014. He hasn't. 2011, 
you know, if we're gonna just like that's his peak. One to ten, that's the ten. That's peak Aaron Rodgers. That's the guy who when people that's when people started saying he was a Hall of Famer. 2011. He can sustain this. This kid has got every. He's gonna break every record, and he's gonna be a first ballot no thinker Hall of Famer. Three plays. The first play is the fourth and one call to Jamal Williams. Uh, a pass to Williams. Yeah, um, Rogers. He's got a guy in his face. Yeah, like. But ultimately, I've seen him throw better passes under more duress than that for completions and. He has Williams, who's open, and really, if he just puts a little more air under that ball and lets Williams run up under it, he has a chance to convert and, hell, maybe even score a touchdown. Honestly, like, the defender was not in good position. Similar situation, MVS, fourth quarter, game on the line, down by three, a minute and 40 to go, one timeout. He's throwing the ball from his own end zone. Offensive line does a great job giving him enough time to put that thing out there and MVS catches a ball for 50 yards and you know it kind of you know gets them rolling. I think 2011 Aaron Rodgers throwing that ball to Jordy Nelson, he hits him in stride perfectly and that's a touchdown because when you look back at it, there's three defenders there and none of them are in position to catch MVS who runs like a 4-3-2 or some crazy shit. And Rodgers throws the ball not to a spot where he can run up under it, but he throws it sort of short arms it a little bit, or I guess, or he just he, he doesn't put it he doesn't put enough air into the ball because when when MBS turns around, instead of going like this, he has to go like this and he takes like two or three stutter steps and he has to slow down and then he has to catch it like basically like kind of off his shoulder and then he, he then he falls over or I get I think somebody gets a hand on him and then and then in the red zone Third and three, at the very least, you're down by three. You don't need a touchdown, but you want the touchdown because you want to win. But if you have to take the field goal and kick it, you know, like, I expect Rodgers to give himself a little more, give his team, rather, a better chance to win this game. The irony here is that I've been saying that Rodgers, one of his biggest weaknesses is that he doesn't play within the rhythm of the offense and that he scrambles too much and he holds the ball too much. And this is the this is like one of those times where it's like I actually wanted him to do that. Um, Cause the key word is too much. I, I love the fact that that's part of his game, but I don't like the fact that he does it so much. And this is honestly the one time where I feel like he needed to do that and he didn't. Instead, he locked in on Devontae Adams from the very snap of the ball. He threw a very difficult, like the angle in the, in the position of the defender and where Devontae was in the end zone, like basically like right on the back part of the 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 the, out the boundary, like it was a difficult throw, and it's like the, the offensive line had it blocked pretty well, and I feel like he could have looked at Devontae and just look t turned his head for two seconds, like one, not even like boom, look there, you already look at him down, look just swing your head to Tanya, who's wide the fuck open on the right hand side and throw it there but even if Tanyan isn't open you look he's not open and if you want to go back and force it to Devontae then force it to Devontae but honestly you should know that's not really open either so then maybe you scramble and maybe you can get yourself open for a little four yard scamper or maybe Devontae is able to lose his guy cuts back in and you can you know hit him throw a laser Instead of having to throw this weird, it was a very weird angle, especially given the, 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 the position of the defender. Um, or at the very least, maybe you just throw it away and you still can kick a field goal. So it's like, I feel like Rodgers, he deserves 50% of the blame. 25% to Matt LaFleur because his team continues to come out flat, uh, you know, or his team continues to play. is a tale of two halves, you know what I'm saying? And... He had some bonehead calls to me on third and short a few times, that being one of them. And, and, and the other one, uh, he, he threw a pass to MVS. And, and then there was another, I think, a fourth down where they didn't get it. And he's got Jamal Williams like five yards deep or seven yards deep for a handoff with no lead blocker 
to get two yards or one yard. I'm like, that's bonehead call. And but but the biggest reason why he deserves 25% of the blame, and which is probably 90% of 50% of the 25%. That makes any sense. Is uh, he continues to allow Mike Pettin, the defensive coordinator, to hold this team back? And I- I'm sick of like to me, it's a foregone conclusion that Pettin should be fired. Obvious. He should have. They should have fired him at the end of the uh, 49ers game in the NFC Championship. But but ultimately, it's like the buck stops with you, Lafleur. And if Pettin isn't going to do what he needs to do. To ensure that this team can like function well on defense and not give up 17 points in the third quarter, in the third and fourth quarter, then you got to take the responsibility out of his hand. It's on you to to like ins- to 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 get these guys, you know, to do to do something, bro. You can't just let Petten continue to make these dumbass decisions. Uh, and then the last five percent, I'm gonna give two and a half to to, to Shepard for the fumble, and the other two and a half to Marquez. By this Scantley for the fumble, and and and, uh, and yeah, yeah. There's your blame game. There's your there's your pie chart for the day. Last topic of discussion for the day is the 2020 Hall of Fame class has been announced. 25 semifinalists, which will be dwindled down to the final list of like eight to ten players. But two Packers made the list: Leroy Butler and Woodson. I think Butler, who has been on this list for a few years now. I think he might have a good chance of finally getting in. I think he should get in uh, eventually. I mean, he was a he was on the All Decade team for the 1990s. He was a really important part of those Packers Super Bowl teams, and he invented Lambo Leap. I want to say, yeah, he invented Lambo Leap. I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm pretty sure he did invent the Lambo Leap. And of course, Woodson, he, he's a no-brainer. I mean, Charles Woodson, you know, 2000. Uh, defensive MVP, Heisman Trophy winner, I mean, Super Bowl champion. He, um, leads, he has the all-time record for most you know, touchdowns by a defender. He's got 20-plus sacks, 20-plus interceptions. I mean, you know, no-brainer, man, no-brainer. So, uh, hopefully, congratulations to those guys. Hopefully, they'll get a chance to cement themselves into the Hall of Fame and join the rest of their Green Bay brethren. I am your host, God Child, first of his name, G D C H Y L D. No O, no I. Don't ask me why. This has been What's Packing Sports Show, where it's Green Bay all day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, share. Let me know who you would place the blame on, how you would break it down, and what you know. What do you think about uh, the Packers being seven and three? And are they contenders or pretenders? Or you know, just let me know. All right, till next time, guys. 